What's up, Ted? God, look oh, at you. How are you? You beautiful bastard. What's oh, up, dude? No, hey, man, you, you're the best. How are you? Thanks well, for having me. And hey. Well, welcome to On the Road to Rock. This is a first. Actually, Ted, you don't know this, but you're kind of like a unicorn of this show. Uh, after eight years, it's finally happened. The unicorn has been captured and, and bottled up right here for everyone's naked steaming eyes. Right here. This is great. Oh, thank you, man. I, I, and I'm, I'm feeling particularly horny like a unicorn as well. So thank you. I appreciate that. Oh, me too. I see your Kiss uh, Asylum poster back there. Now it's getting, making me getting all the feels. So yeah. Uh, yeah. Some right of my there. autographed yeah. albums. Those are just some of my autographed albums up on the walls over there. There they go. Uh, come back. Dude, Ted, you'd be so jealous. I saw Bruce Kulick and his gang, uh, Eric Singer on drums, actually, in Vegas. Uh, new, right around New Year's, doing all the Kiss '80s stuff. Uh, it was a great deal. Todd Kern sings with them. It was oh, Todd's great. I yeah. love Todd. I did. I did some work with the Sin City Centers with Todd. I love Todd so much, man. That's awesome, man. And, and of course, I love Kiss. And I even just got recently. I played with Ace Freely, so uh, that was the one guy I never played with. And uh, he signed my doll, and everything's great. So love <laughs> Kiss, man. And I would have loved to have been at that show with you. Yeah, so you had a unicorn as well, and so this is just life, you know, treating us well. Well, uh, you sort of made kind of a um, big announcement just a few hours before coming on the show here, Ted, on your social media there. Um, dare we say 2023 is the year of the Ted Poley farewell tour? Can we, do we, do we need to, we need an IP for the name, maybe, we got to figure this out. Um, it's the beginning of the end. Yeah. I, I, you know, the past three years have been horrible. Um, we've been locked down, uh, not able to travel so much. And, uh, this year I said, that's it. I'd rather go out with my boots on. It's time to go around the world one more time. So there we go. Thanks for, uh, leading into that. The start of the Ted Poley 2023, one last lap around the world tour. Um, and that actually will start in, uh, I've already got dates, I believe, starting in Belfast and then uh, on to Wales and Scotland and UK and England and all that good stuff starting in March of next year. So uh, a true world tour. And uh, thank you for that announcement and lots more dates to come and uh, come on out so that I can thank everybody and say, uh, uh, you know, farewell. Uh, it may take a few years. The world is a very big place, but um, I want to go out and sing the songs one more time. Thank everybody. Give them a hug, take a photo, sign their stuff and uh, and say goodbye and thank you. So, uh, you know, come on out. Don't miss it. Uh, last time around, a lot of, a lot of work. <laughs> so, so will, the, will there be any Danger Danger shows intermixed in this, or this will just be you, your band? This is this is it. What's, what's whatever I do will be part of this tour. As far as Danger Danger, even that stuff is so mysterious. Even I don't know what's going on with that. But you can bet if you come out and see me, you'll certainly hear you know, some of your favorite songs. And basically everything I do will be incorporated into this tour. I'm starting to play guitar. I do some acoustic shows. So the first few uh, legs of the tour may be uh, me acoustic and then some festivals, some electric stuff, some other countries thrown in. Of course, Monsters of Rock Cruise in the middle of that whole thing. So 2023 is going to be the year I get out there and say thank you and hug everybody. And I hope to see everybody. It's going to be awesome. A portion of my proceeds always goes to help support no kill animal shelters. So I hope that everybody within earshot of my voice out there, you've got really good fans. I know they're good people. They all have pets and there are a lot more out there that could use their help. And uh, so please donate a couple of bucks to your local no kill animal shelter and uh, I'll be touring the world. And if I have anything left over, certainly that's where the money's going. So awesome. Ted, that's so well said. And I'll be honest, like I did not, you're, you've been an inspiration to me in a lot of ways. I'm a huge fan of your music, but that's all secondary because we've got to talk about the animals for a second because I didn't grow up with a pet. I never had a dog, never had a cat. My girlfriend has cats and Ted ever, ever since becoming like Facebook friends with you, seeing your posts, seeing how passionate you are. I've become so attached to her cats that they're like mine now too, Ted. And now I've become a cat lover and I'm blaming you and it's a great thing. But you do such great work with you no know, kill animal shelters. And I hope, and I'm in Kansas City, so I hope the same goes for here. Anyone with an earshot that knows the great shelters here, and there are several. Ted, you just turned me into a, just a big sappy cat lover. And I'm, no, nah, man, you know what? I, I, I am so thankful. That's why I do interviews like this. I pretty much, you know, said all there is to say. Nobody needs to hear how Danger Danger got together, you know, but I do, uh, I do promote. Um, I try and do my best for different charities, especially for the animals, which is a, cons a constant for me. And uh, again, to just let you know that I'll be coming out. Otherwise, uh, I just appreciate this this time with you, man. And uh, and we got here, you know, look well, at us. Look at us. Uh, look at you specifically, man. I always say 
a band, an artist should never stop touring when they, if they still have their hair and they still look as good as you do. So, man, I don't know if three years is going to be long enough. Oh man, that, you still got your hair. lips to God's ears. You know, if if it goes well, you know, hopefully I can do the kiss thing and make it a long, drawn out goodbye. Um, and the world is a big place, and I, I've been, uh, you know, going back and forth to places. So it'll take a little while. Uh, it's not a sad thing; it's a happy thing. Um, a new chapter in my life where. Someday I get to, uh, you know, support other music, eat what I want and shave my head. But for now, um, I'm still singing pretty well. I'm working out and uh, I miss everybody. It's been, like I say, three years of, of lockdown. And, and uh, there are a lot of friends out there. I've been making some videos over the time, but there's nothing like getting out there and just really hugging everybody. And seriously, um, I've never looked forward to anything more. Um, if you come out, every show is a meet and greet with me. And, uh, and, and uh, you know, that's it. I really want to meet everybody again. And I appreciate everything. So thank well, you all and uh, come on out. Ted, one thing I really admire about you and uh, a lot of artists like yourself, uh, Eric Martin, Tom Kiefer from Cinderella, have kind of had to rebuild their own brand name and their with their name as their band has kind of ceased touring or whatever. So you've had to sort of build this Ted Poley brand name and you've done it successfully you see that name and you think and, and, and you know the hits are going to be there you know you're going to have a great time and i've seen it on a lot of the festivals whether it be m3 or a lot of the ones around that you're just as, as solid as they come when it comes to live performances you talk about every show's a meet and greet literally because i see you out there whether it be during uh don't walk away you're being mobbed by fans and you're still hitting all the notes it's a, it's it's an immersive experience I, you know what, everybody, I look out sometimes, everybody's smiling, having so much fun that I go out there with them. I, I still love concerts and uh, it sounds great out there. It's one of my favorite things is to go out and walk through the crowd. Everybody that's going to my shows knows I love to do that. We, you know, we use that as a time to take some special selfies while I'm at work and sweating all over, but it's awesome. And um, that's one of my favorite parts of the show. I go out there, you can't keep me on stage. Um, yeah. Awesome. You love concerts. You are a music fan. And so much so that you saw the stadium tour, I believe not once, but two different ones. And you're down there. Go, yes. How was it? I and like it. people were recognizing you and they're like, is this fucking Ted Poli right here? Like just rocking out. You're like right up by the stage. That looked just awesome, man. It's so much fun. You can't keep me away. Like I said, I'm fans of all of those bands, especially, you know, Def Leppard's been one of my all time favorite bands and Poison Life just keeps bringing it. I've, they're just amazing. And actually, I saw the stadium tour twice and then went off to see my friends Brett and the guys just the other night here. They did a you know, Brett never stops working. He, the night's off on the stadium tour. This guy's amazing. He still did a Poison show on his night off. And I went to see them in, right here in Bethlehem by my house. And uh, that was a great night. So Poison, I guess, three times this summer. And yeah, man, if I'm not playing, I go to concerts. I love being out there. Backstage is fun, but the best place to be is out where the drums hit you in the chest. And that's where I'll be. So that's why people see me a lot at concerts, because I could hide if I wanted to. But they're in the best sounding seats. So I'm out there enjoying it like everybody else. And so if we if we take some photos and have some fun, that's it's great. It's all good. Well, I, I'm going to see the show here uh, next week in L.A. So I'm flying out to L.A. next week for the, the show at SoFi Stadium. So I haven't seen it yet. You've got to uh -huh. you're you're my source here of course i've seen all the videos i you know i saw motley Crue's last show in la in 15 when we thought it was the end you know and so here we go is motley Crue? were they bringing yeah. it to like i mean give us a good look a review you want to know something it it's amazing and just to see these guys still kicking butt everybody it's like seeing old friends i've seen these tours for years you know um and just to be with them in the same place and get that energy and just to see Fortunately, I had some good seats. I, you know, Joe Elliott's feet were like, you know, right here. <laughs> it was awesome. And uh, I got to, you know, just see them up close. And it's like seeing old friends. Um, and everybody sounds great. And of course, you know, the technology now, the shows are off the hook. And um, there's nothing, you know, there's nothing better than a big, loud, awesome concert. And uh, I wish I could go with you, man. I'd go a third time, man. I just want to, it's a ride. You just want to get right back on. I'll tell you. Well, you're right. And it's an experience that over the last couple of years, I, I took for granted live shows ted i travel around the country i do this i do interviews and i'm just all over the place and like to not have that for a couple years it was like taking away your ability to breathe and i know that's the same for the artists we all felt felt it the same and it was just brutal and it was terrible and i hope it never happens again yeah me too i, I mean but yeah it was, it was like you know i decided to do this when i was about three or four years old and i'm 60 now so they you know they pulled the plug on pretty much everything i knew um, and so that's why right now I can't wait to get back out there. I've got shows this year. You'll see me popping mm -hmm. up here and there, but, um, 
again next year i just plan on a lot of frequent flyer miles a lot of ground miles and um i don't think i'll be home a whole lot so i'll leave a big bowl of food for the cats i i don't know that there's anyone like you ted you even offer up at times to to go do private shows when so, if someone wants to hang out with ted for the night you just you post it up say hey i'm free tonight anybody want to show that's freaking cool and if i lived anywhere you know, near the east coast we would have been hanging out quite a bit bud some of my favorite shows are fan shows i found that uh, lately i've been playing guitar so it's a lot of fun i can go do acoustic stuff and hang out with people at their homes best part being some of these guys have have bars and venues in their homes that are better than some of the places i play on the road so it's been so much fun and then yeah i mean you go what better job can you have to than to go to somebody's home they're inviting you there's usually some food and some drink and and they're just happy that you show up and you know um i'm not eddie van halen on guitar but i have fun and we sing and and it's more of a casual setting so um everybody has a good time and i i've i've had the most fun um with those shows so if anybody out there uh, is listening would like a ted poley show i piggyback my shows off of tour if i'm playing in a big venue and i have a night off i'll come and uh, sleep on the couch mow the lawn and sing bang bang for you <laughs> I'll curl up with your dog for the night. I need some dog kisses. Well, I, there you go. See, there you go. Always the tie in there. Well, you know, Ted, you've you've done a lot of interviews. You've done an, all the talk about Danger Danger and forming and MTV and all that. And we, we're not going to get into, into that today, but I do want to talk about the lasting legacy of these songs. The fact that you still go out there, you still sing them, and it sounds so wonderful in a live setting, and that people want to hear these songs. There's a legacy to these songs, and we ha and, and that's important. I mean, whether it be, you know, Bang, bang, naughty, naughty. My favorite song, I'm not talking my favorite Danger Danger song. My favorite song of all time, Ted, I'm just going to be honest, is Don't Walk Away. It's my favorite song ever. Really? If you just have any story about that or writing it or anything that you could share, because no, that is you know my favorite I, song I of all write, time. Yeah, I didn't write the Danger Danger stuff. I influenced it. It's sure. me that you hear. Um, but Don't Walk Away was like the hit that never happened. I'll tell you, we, we go to some places around the world and... Um, it's amazing. We're even surprised by what happens. And when we went to Portugal for the first time, um, we were surprised to find out that we were very, very popular, more popular than real big bands here because of Don't Walk Away, which was a huge hit in Portugal. And they said um, it was just the biggest thing. And we played to thousands of people because of that one song. And and uh, so thanks for liking that. I love it. That's um, I mean, but if that had come out maybe in the U.S., you know, maybe I'd be working today instead of speaking. I was going to say maybe a missed opportunity because uh, for whatever reason, the label didn't uh, push that out. I mean, I think that was, to me, it's the best ballad of the of the entire era and from an era that was chock full of wonderful ones. Don't walk away to me. It's so much more meaningful in that guitar riff at the beginning. It's like, it lets it burn. It lets it kind of like ease into it it's like a summer I, I night love this song you know danger danger was cool we had a lot of ballads and unfortunately <laughs> we never released any and that was the difference between um you know warrant and firehouse working every weekend and, and me not coming on right before cj because we uh never got to the ballad and and the things that made those guys the biggest they had great songs but of course you know skid row with i remember you and warrant with heaven and you know uh, firehouse you know love of a lifetime these were the big songs because they were the ballads and had we done something like don't walk away or or uh, one step from paradise or i still think about you yeah. uh things might have been different by the time we got that far it was about 10 minutes to grunge the alarm clock went off everybody put on flannel war goatees and there wasn't anything we could have done past there that would have done any good for us but um had we released a ballad that's that's the difference just that just that little difference <laughs> Well, there's still a legacy here and we're celebrating it to this day. And that's got to be meaningful when you when you play these venues and you sing these right. songs and people sing it back to you. There's no feeling that's like that. There just can't be. I mean, that's just got to be the most gratifying thing. Other there's than you nothing know, better, nothing yeah. better than looking out and seeing people singing those lyrics, because when you forget them, you could always sort of see read people's lips and go, oh, yeah, that's right. You don't need a teleprompter. You've got just people singing it right back to you. Right. That's exactly right. That's my secret. That's that's. Right. Uh, so that's Ted, why when the lights are in my eyes, you'll get more, more screw ups. That's why. What <laughs> oh, that's so perfect. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to kind of end things on kind of a fun note. We're just going to do final four drum roll as we call it. Since you were originally a drummer, we uh, got to do a final four drum roll, which is four quick questions. You give us whatever comes to mind and we will bid farewell for now. So oh, question please. one, okay. Yeah, okay. you're right. Okay. You're good. You're right. I'm ready. I'm question one, in. how many pets do you have currently? What are their names and where are they? I thought they might oh be crawling all over you. 
All right. Right now we're down to, I have seven rescues. They're my babies. I have, wow. oh my gosh. I, I named them after, after cities around the world. Very funny. And okay. If I'm going to start naming, okay. We just lost Kingston. That was the eighth one. But we have like Lima from Lima, Peru. I have Kyoto from Japan. They're twins, actually. We have uh, who we have. Well, Cookie was adopted. That's not a, a a city, but that would be a delicious city if it were. Um, who else do we have right now? We have. Uh, oh, my gosh, actually. Well, we have Alvin and Peggy. They were also they came with names. Anyway, I have seven cats and they're actually in a different part of the house. We have to have certain sections because I have to have a few sections, such as my studio here that are hair free. Um, but we, I love the babies. But so there you go. I have seven current uh, rescues, and um, those are most of their names right there. I, that was great. Wow, that was on the putting you on the spot too. You did, you did good. I had no that. idea. But I'm sweating actually. Oh, I'm gonna have to need a shower. This this counts as a workout. This does. Okay. Question two: What was the first concert you ever attended? Oh my gosh! Well, that it was actually Chicago, the band Chicago. But then right after, like a week later, I saw Kiss, and that changed my life. But um, yeah, what Chicago tour was that? They were great. What yeah. tour was actually, the kids or, 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 Actually, I mean, that was during, you know, when I, I mean, when I was a little kid, maybe like Bobby Sherman or something like that. That's was true. Really cool. or, or the Beatles on Ed Sullivan, you know, but actually live concert. I remember Chicago and it was great. They had all the horns and the cool songs and they were great. And uh, it was just, I was addicted from that day. I think it was at Madison Square Garden in like 1970 something. I mean, I remember looking out and there was a brontosaurus crazing. So it was, it was a long time ago, but I think definitely in the mid to early seventies in Chicago at Madison Square Garden. That was cool. So probably then kiss, it would have been right around, like it would have been right around the second album, maybe like dressed to kill. No, it was after a uh, live one, actually. I think. So love my, gun. All right. Oh yeah, that, my, my arrow was yeah. All the really cool covers. I I got into you know with Destroyer and Love Gun and and um uh, you know here actually they're all right on my wall. Uh, Rock and Roll Over and yep, all that good stuff, man. So um that was my sort of formative Kiss years. Um, and there you go. Oh, that's tremendous. What is the first album that you bought or or stole? Very cool. I remember I I, I the very first album I got was. Um, and it was a double album, which was very expensive at the time. I remember albums were $3 and this one was like 6 or $7. And it was uh, Goodbye Yellow Brick Road by um, by Elton John. And that was the first one I actually had to save up for that and go buy it at the store. But officially, the first record I ever had, I cut off of a cereal box, which was uh, um, Sugar Sugar by the Archies. So that was a 45 and they used to come on a cereal box. On the outside, you just cut it off and you could really play it for like once or twice before it ripped to shreds. But um, so Sugar Sugar by the Archies is officially the first record I ever really owned and I cut it off a box. Dude, that's badass. I used to have those Archies glasses that they had my grandma pass those down. Those are great. Very cool. Um, you, you can, uh, be the front man for one band living or dead around anymore or whatever. You can do one set with one band ever and you're the singer. What band is it? And what's, what happens? Danger, danger. <laughs> That'd be great. I don't know. I'm happy. Yes. You know, that's, a, that's a hard question because so many of the bands I love, I wouldn't want to do it because I love them and I wouldn't want to wreck it or influence it. What I love about them is because I'm not in them. Um, so that's a tough question. Um, but really, if I was going to, you know, just get on stage with anybody to be, you know, probably didn't see this coming. I'd say journey, but not a chance because I'd be judged, you know, by a Steve Perry level. But I, I love Bob Marley. I wish, you know, I'd get on stage with Bob oh. Marley or or, um, you know, just really, really um, the Partridge family. Maybe <laughs> I think that would be the best. Yes. Um, I, I would like to say I think I love you with the Partridge family. I think that would be a dream come true. That is a great answer, Ted. This has been so much fun. And uh, this is just the, the beginning because we're going to see you out somewhere there in the stratosphere coming up here in the next year or two or three. And I can't wait to do it, my friend. I might even get married one of these days just to have you come come do that. I don't know. I've never done it. Is that a good idea or no? It's a, it's, I think it's an awesome idea. Yes, we should definitely do that. Yes, I'll just, yes, absolutely. <laughs> well, I meant just the getting married part. I mean, of course, the, the show, but. I mean, the, the wedding it's your show. These are all good ideas. They're your <laughs> ideas. And this is your show. There's no bad ideas. Ted, you're the best, man. Thank you so much for being a part of On the Road to Rock. I can't thank you enough. We'll catch up soon, my man. Appreciate it. Love you. Love everybody out there. Thank you all. Please support the animals, and I'll see you out on the road next year. Love you guys.